Hey y'all, Uncle Jimmy here. When you speak for yourself, you're forced to think for yourself. And when you think for yourself, the sports world looks different. In order to enjoy this podcast and this show, you need to have the courage to look at the world from alternative points of view and not be offended when you disagree. Speak for Yourself isn't your Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram feed. SFY tells you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. So, welcome aboard, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. We start at the NBA All-Star Game. We learned something important during Sunday's game that had nothing to do with the exciting new format. Giannis Antetokounmpo hasn't made nearly as much progress as we think. Listen, I love the new format. Hats off to Adam Silver and the NBA for embracing change and having the courage to implement a new strategy. Yesterday's fourth quarter was the highlight of NBA All-Star Weekend and made the dunk contest controversy absolutely irrelevant. Team LeBron's victory over Team Giannis was the most intense and exciting All-Star game since Pete Rose ran over Ray Fossey in the 1970 mid Major League Midsummer Classic. But lost in all the bluster and babbling about the hyper-competitive fourth quarter was what happened to the Greek freak in that fourth quarter. The freak got exposed again. Team Giannis entered the fourth quarter with a nine-point lead, leading 133-124. They needed to score 24 points to end the game. Team LeBron needed 33 points to end it. Team Giannis couldn't get to 157 points because their best player was once again rendered useless on the offensive end by elite defense. When the game turned serious, when the defenses refused to allow cheap dunks, the Greek freak could not score. He couldn't crack the wall. Sunday's fourth quarter looked like a reenactment of last year's Eastern Conference Finals when, Toron when the Toronto Raptors shut down Giannis with a defensive wall that wouldn't let him slash to the rim. Giannis posted a donut in Sunday's fourth quarter. He missed both shots he took. He failed to create offense for any of his teammates. Team Giannis coach Nick Nurse did not help matters. He foolishly left guard Trey Young on the sideline in the entire fourth quarter. Young was Sunday's best playmaker with 10 assists. But Nurse should have said Giannis, too, and played Utah big man Rudy Gobert. Young and Gobert had a magical connection going all game. That fourth quarter was painful to watch if you were rooting for Team Giannis or Giannis Antetokounmpo. Elite playoff intense defense is kryptonite for the Greek freak. The Bucs have 28 games left in their regular season. Giannis is the favorite to win the MVP again. Giannis allegedly added tools to his offensive repertoire to prevent a repeat of last postseason. Those tools were missing on Sunday. You can say it's one game against a bunch of All-Stars. Okay. But I say it's a troubling pattern. You can stop the Greek freak. You can give him a nine-point lead, surround him with four All-Stars, and beat him. You can't do that to Kawhi Leonard. You can't do that to LeBron James. Hell, you couldn't do it to Jimmy Butler. The Greek freak needs another tweak. All right, joining the desk now mm. are Fox Sports NBA analyst Rick Buecher and Steven Jackson. Marcellus, get us rolling. Yeah. Did yeah. Giannis get exposed again? Nope. I don't, I don't think he was exposed at all, man. I, I, I'm going to give you the mental dynamic of an all-star game. Being up here as one of the all-stars that is at this table. <laughs> <laughs> You got to get into this game mentally, and as I said, you don't want to look like the guy who's trying too hard. So you got to raise your hands low. Not raise your hand high like, I want to be the MVP. I want to be the man. You got to kind of raise it low. And we always talk about what is the proper 50%. What is the proper job for the optics? Look competitive, but, bro, don't you go too hard because we all great up here. So Giannis got caught up in his brand. And I think what Giannis didn't want to do is go full Giannis. In the fourth quarter, you do not want him to go from David Banner to an Incredible Hulk out there to flex because he only really has one gear. So Giannis in the fourth quarter only takes two shots. He's like, I know I can go full Giannis. I'm not. But what people didn't catch is that this team that was up eight, all of a sudden down two, and one thing happened. Giannis in their game plan was like, look, we're going to go after James Harden because you know they got a little issue from the MVP last year. We're going to pick Kimba over James Harden because uh, my guy Kimba will pass the ball. They got a little trolling going on right now. And in that moment where Giannis is the brand and everyone's still thinking about last year in the, in the playoffs, how he fell short, 
He passes the ball to Kimba. Keeps passing to Kimba. Kimba missed five shots in a row, including four three-pointers. And all of a sudden, that eight-point lead went down to a two-point deficit. And then everyone wants to blame Giannis because it's easy. It's low-hanging fruit. Giannis, it's your team. Right. Giannis didn't do anything. Giannis actually followed the game plan. And then conveniently, most people assume Giannis was the downfall when he wasn't. Giannis got exposed. <laughs> Oh, and for those of us who have always said this is what Giannis has missing in his game, we had it confirmed. That's what I loved about this All-Star game is when you just put the stars out there, the best players versus the best players, and it comes down to the first one to 157, you find out real quick who the other players believe in mm -hmm. and who can get it done in a one-on-one -on -one situation. That's why, that's why Giannis, that was the flaw in the team that Giannis picked. Right. He didn't have any go-to guys on the floor. There was no – that's why they were going to Joel Embiid simply because they were hoping that that size advantage was going to get there. That's why I disagree with you on your solution on having Trey Young and Rudy Gobert out there. They were going at Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry ended up on Anthony Davis. They would have sliced and diced Trey Young. He might have, he might have created something for you at the other end, but Rudy Gobert wouldn't have been enough to protect him at the other end. It was an inherent flaw in the team that Giannis picked. But ultimately, when you want to go win a game and you think of the MVP, it's a guy in the playoffs, in the last seven, eight seconds, or the last minute, we need a bucket. Who are we going to go to? We're going to give it to our best player. Milwaukee Bucks cannot do that. And that's why people continue to look at who does he have around him. And I think that's an abdication of what the responsibility of the best player on the team is. If you're the best player on that team, then when it comes to crunch time, you need to be the guy who's capable of going and getting it. I don't think he got exposed. He couldn't shoot before the All-Star game. <laughs> yeah. So what, what, did he, what, did he, what got exposed? Um, the, the biggest thing about it was the, the LeBron's team had all the closures. He had all the finishers on his team. People talk about how they was going at James and how nobody wanted to pick James, LeBron or, or Greek Freak. Mm. Well, if you look at the end of the game, James started off just like just like uh, Kimba, missing Kimba. shots. But yep. at the end of the game, we know James is one of the best one-on-one -on -one scorers in this game. They gave him the ball. Yeah. Kawhi didn't get it. Kawhi was on fire. Mm -hmm. LeBron was on the same team. He didn't get it. They was going to James because everybody know we all out here great and we all have roles to play to win this game. And James is one of those closers. They had all the closers on the team. It was no way that Greek Freak team was going to win, even up nine, with two minutes yeah. left when you have no too many guys on your team. How do you explain that James didn't take the reins, though? Because he was not as aggressive as I would have expected him to James be Horton? in that Yes. Well, when you, got, when you got three, four other MVPs on your team and you got Kawhi coming out seven for seven from three, you know, you, you got to defer a little bit. We're all great out here, so you got to defer. And if I don't have it going on, especially mm. in the All-Star game, you make two or three shots, everybody start giving you the ball. Okay, you're going to win the MVP. Only thing is, I don't want to move away from Giannis. Right. Because one thing, and from my vantage point, couch, TV, having watched a lot of All-Star games, that was the most intense defense I've ever seen played in an NBA All-Star game. He almost saved their game, too. We, but both... Groups to me were playing really hard. Anytime I saw guys going after the officiating crew, yeah. the way they were, yeah. it mattered. I love yeah. that. That was heated. They wanted to play. And so to me, the best players in the world are on the court. You're the reigning MVP. You're the prohibitive favorite to be the MVP this year. Your team has the best record. You can't get a bucket in this fourth quarter. The the whole your team is team Giannis. Yeah. Yep. And you can't get a bucket? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just like I was just telling you, I can use a lot of people examples and a lot of MVPs. A lot of people can make shots in the first three quarters. Hmm. The last two minutes of a hmm. playoff game or a finals game, you got some of the best. I, I say this all the time, and I love this guy, Kyle Carver. You give him the ball the first three quarters, hmm. ice water. Right. <clears throat> give it to him up with 45 seconds left in the fourth quarter to win the game. He won't hit it. Everybody can't make them shots. And like I said, Greek Freak couldn't have got exposed because he couldn't shoot before the game. Okay, but let's not even go too exposed in the first place because, look, he got exposed last year in the playoffs. That's one time. That could mm -hmm. be chance. You can't use the fourth quarter of a All-Star game as the coincidence that could go to a pattern if we see it again. Playoff basketball intensity. 
Regular season intensity. Right. All different. Fourth quarter Fair. of an all-star game when you were nine hours ago at the Hennessy party, and y'all trying to say, oh, this is who he is. This is who he is. <laughs> Man, stop. This dude has better numbers this year than he did in the MVP campaign last year. Whitlock, my dog. He's going against stacked teams in the regular season. Regular season but, MVP. Uh, remember that. Regular, regular season That's MVP. what I'm talking about. Okay, okay, okay. But, 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 he's exposed. but he's supposed no, to he's conf- exposed. But he's supposed to validate that by taking the Bucs. What, what are you guys talking about, by the way? Everybody's talking about the Bucs having the best record. Giannis is going to be the MVP again. He and he's yeah, going to validate all that by taking the Bucs to the NBA Finals and winning a championship. Right. That is the narrative. Yeah. And what I saw on Sunday was a guy who's not ready to carry that. You're saying he still can't shoot. He's hitting threes now. Supposedly, he can shoot from range. The difficulty he ran into and the difficulty he's going to run into the playoffs is when it comes to the playoffs, it becomes like it did in that fourth quarter. The game is below the free throw line. Rick. Can you handle the ball? Rick, a can you? All-star game is never, ever something no, 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 no. A, a playoff intensity. No, no, no. no. What, I'm ta- what I'm talking, I'm not talking just intensity. I'm okay. talking about where you're going to get a bucket. He needs to operate below the free throw line, not shooting a three from 40 feet. But don't you think in the playoffs he's going to have a game plan versus in the All-Star game, you know what the game plan was? Go after James Harden. But Whoever is James Harden's garden, that's the game but plan. But he got better options on, y'all. in the All-Star game. So it's easy to defer to other players. You're playing with other All-Stars. He's not trying to go out there and make every play on this right. team. He has to make every play on his team. But he also has better spacing surrounded by a bunch of All-Stars. I'm sorry, man. And yesterday, in that All-Star game, that was more intense than regular season. I'm sorry. Right. I watch enough regular mm. season. That mm. fourth quarter was more intense. The mm. defensive intensity, just the effort that was put into it, that's one thing. Yep. And I'm just sorry. With that group of All-Stars, your ego kicks in. Your pride mm. kicks in. Your Mamba mentality kicks in. And I'm just sorry, Kawhi Leonard can go get buckets at that time. LeBron James at 35 in year 17 can go get buckets. AD closed out the game, creating a foul and getting to the free throw line. Uh, You know, Jimmy Butler, had he been in, he would have been able to go get buckets. There's guys that can go get you buckets at crunch time when the best of the best are playing their hardest, and that's what was happening in that fourth quarter. The Greek freak to me, I'm sorry. If I'm the reigning MVP, headed to a second straight MVP, and I'm the best player, I can go get a bucket. As, that was like a 30-minute fourth quarter. And it's, I'm going to get one bucket. And mm, it's, one thing, it's one thing to get a bucket or not get a bucket. He couldn't get a shot. Mm-hmm. He couldn't get Boom. a clean look. I wanted to see at least once him do what Joel Embiid did to LeBron James. Give me the ball. Oh, I got a great defender on me. I'm going to shake you, and I'm going to get a look. Now, whether the ball goes down or not, the fact of the matter is you showed me that you have the wherewithal to get you a good look with the game on the line. Giannis could not. It w- he was overpowered below the free throw line trying to get a look. I'm just shocked that we're going to damn this guy right. when he's living not- in the spirit of the game, which is, hey, man, this is a glorified pickup game. What y'all doing? Oh, y'all want to go ahead? Wait a minute. He didn't go. I know what kind of pickup game he, he you didn't played go in. For 11. Did he go I, for 11? You're going to go get it. I'm going to get it. I ain't in the Drew League. I ain't getting it. If, if you're seeing a bunch of guys that it. can pull, just your ego kicks in. Yeah, yeah. And 100%. then your ego kicks in and realizes, oh, guess what? I got a regular season MVP. I'm after a bigger goal than winning the All-Star MVP. And I'm the only guy out here that's taking a challenge on defense every play. Every oh, play. I, I no, give him that. I love, uh, he wasn't switching. He wanted to go on LeBron, all that. You got to give him credit for that. But that's the whole thing. That shows my you. My shot's not that, going. I'm going to do it another way. No, no, no. Right, right. But that is where Giannis Genius. is in his comfort zone. Oh, you want me to D up? Oh, I'll give you all that. You <laughs> yeah. want me to go get you a bucket? Uh, who else He's got the Kim here? He's Kimbe right. Mutombo. Right. Right. <laughs> Other guys are not as great as him. He's in the MVP conversation, front runner, and the defensive yep. player of the year conversation. Yes. So he's like, look, I could defer one of these guys so I don't look like the ham. In all-star games, you got to raise your hand low. You can't be like, I want to win I blame it. Nick Nurse more than him. I, you, you were right on that. He had the wrong guys in that game. I'll give you that. He had the wrong guys yeah, in that but game. You, know what? He you can't have two Toronto players but, in that game at the end yeah. to try to get buckets. Hey. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Those two but guys PR are wise, PR-wise with your team, you can't not have them out there. Yeah. Wait, well, if it's about winning, which it should well, be. He's trying to win and it's something. And chari- you're raising money for charities? It shouldn't be a Kyle Lowry. Yeah, you took charges. He's, but he's not hitting no shots either. He's trying to win something <laughs> bigger. <laughs> I, I got season. it. But those yeah, players, right, right, those right. players yesterday I get were that. into it and wanted to win. And Nick Nurse just, 
there was no feel for the game. It was like, damn, this fourth quarter is taking a lot longer than I thought. Some of these guys are tired. True. You could have just pulled them just for rest purposes and tried somebody else because early on, and I was like, man, they having problems scoring. They are. Ha- they need some kind of offensive jolt. And I just think they thought we're going to hold on with this nine-point lead and, and we'll get some scrappy buckets, and it just didn't happen, and I'm sorry. Gian- Giannis, to me, my, my comfort of what he's going to do in the postseason mm. just went down. Just oh, man. Been more Trey Young, more oh, Jimmy Butler. Hey, hey, can we – it sounds like right now we over here throwing a bouquet of roses for how the All-Star game turned out. Don't forget how this ended at the damn free throw line. This thing is That's not what fixed. I said. That's okay, what I said. Well, this is into that next. That's we not going, fixed. We're coming into we come okay. that next. We talk about physical fitness a lot, but there's another side to the game that's just as important. I'm talking about mental fitness. Calm, the number one app for sleep and meditation has teamed up with LeBron James to help you train your mind. LeBron and Calm know that your mind is like any other muscle in your body, and Calm can help you train your brain so you sleep better, have less stress, and perform at your best. For LeBron James, sleep is an important part of his mental fitness routine. He says, getting good sleep and finding time to rest is one of the most valuable things I can do for my body and mind. And if you head to calm.com slash sports 40, you'll get 40% off a Calm premium membership. With Calm, you have access to nature scenes LeBron loves and so much more, like sleep stories and meditations. For a limited time, our listeners can join LeBron in using Calm with a 40% discount to an annual membership at calm.com slash sports 40. Unlock content to help you focus, ease stress, and sleep better. Get started at calm.com slash sports 40. That's calm.com slash sports 40. Speak for yourself, it's going to Vegas this Wednesday. We take the show on the road and come to you live from the MGM Grand Sportsbook as we look ahead to the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury rematch, audience check in is at 11 a.m. We'll have great guests and giveaways, so come and join the fun. All right, welcome back. Whitlock and Wiley, Steven Jackson, and Rick Buecher are back. Time now for a big story presented by Hyundai. All right, let's return to the All Star game, which Team LeBron won in a 157 155 thriller over Team Giannis last night. The game was played in a brand new format this year, and among the changes was the fourth quarter where teams played an untimed period to a target score set after the third quarter. The result was an incredible turning the usually defenseless and uninspired game into an entertaining spectacle like we hadn't seen in years. All right, did the NBA permanently mm. fix this All-Star game? You like my tease before, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there like, this is a nice format. And I understand the NBA has a leg up. Based on the fact that you have a sport where you can play it in convenience, and then you go down to the corner, shoot. You watch the NBA All-Star game, you're like, that looks like that, good. You never conveniently see football players play that sport, so therefore, they don't have a leg up. You never see hockey just conveniently played. It's a rough, violent sport. NBA has a leg up. And then they go out there and change the format, and they make it more interesting. I'm like, this is the false competitiveness I wanted to see all the time. <laughs> yes, the optics is fake. Come on, man. Ain't nobody going for real for What? Whatever. Y'all play it. Okay, I'm just... Respect how great they are and respect that that ain't them at their best. So I'm still loving it. They're selling me. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah, I got an appointment at 8.30. And, and Anthony Davis is going to the free throw line at 8.30. And I'm sitting there like, how anticlimactic. All this, and we gonna get there, and he gonna go up there and burn. First one, second one. Oh, let's run and rush him. The pageantry, the cotton candy, the corniness, the the fact that it didn't, it didn't end on a high lets me know that hey, this is the best glue job you can do for something that's permanently broken, which is all All Star games. Mm. Even though the NBA All Star is the best of the worst, mm. so I give him credit for doing it. But let's be real. Nobody went home pumped up off of the high of a free I throw. I did. Well, I, I have to. I okay. was. You off I, the free throw? I, no, no. I, I was excited you. about the game, but the, I agree with you. The game cannot end on a free throw. Uh-huh. It has to be. Basketball so- games never end on free throws. No, the All Star game the can't game. end on a free throw. Why not? Because it's not the regular game. You're not mm-hmm. playing regular rules. Thank you. Games end on free throws. Regular games. 
Uh, this is an all-star game. They're not playing regular rules. So not playing regular rules. Regular way. So if, if it comes down to a foul, it should be a one-on-one for the bucket. Mm. It shouldn't be a free throw. Mm. Anybody can make a free now throw. We got free well, not anybody. <laughs> not anybody. <laughs> anybody can make free throws. Yeah. Everybody can make free throws. You know what I mean? Everybody can make free throws. But I think yeah. it shouldn't end on a free throw. As, as great as the game was, as great as the changes was, I think at the end of the game of a foul like that, even if it's Kyle Lowry and Anthony Davis, Ooh, yeah. Wow, yeah. let them go one-on-one yeah. from, the, from the top of the key for the bucket, for the game-winning bucket. You guys are forgetting. <laughs> Big three rules. This was an experience experiment. True. I was in the building. Like, no one knew what to expect. They didn't right. know that this was going to be any good. They didn't know that this was going to solve the problem. Right. And that, even when we got to the fourth quarter, because the first three quarters, they were eh. I mean, a little more competitive. The they started off good now. Yeah, yeah they did. Well, yeah, but the, they started off good. But the end, the third was set up because now you split two quarters and let's see who's going to have the edge going into the fourth. Mm. But then the fourth starting with Lowry taking a charge, and everybody's like, what the hell? Mm. And then, like, now Giannis is going with LeBron one-on-one and blocking his baseline fade, and now LeBron wants to get him back at the end. And this thing just grew and grew and grew. So I get that you don't like that it ended on a free throw. Mm -hmm. But the other part of me was looking at it thinking, man, these dudes are going hard. And yes. they did not expect to go hard. Like, I know I know where some cats were the night before. Right. They were not prepared <laughs> right. to play part. that right. hard. And I'm right. thinking, somebody's going to break down. And the problem, if you take away the free throw, is that guys were just going to foul and foul and foul because they were not going to give up that last bucket. Mm. They were not going to give up that last bucket. Mm. And then you run into, we can never end this thing, and somebody's going to get hurt. Well, sometimes you, the foul... If you're that good, a foul can't do nothing. I'm getting that bucket. Look, let's don't pretend like <laughs> NBA players, NFL players don't play games after leaving Hennessy parties uh, other than All-Star games. Some, so, we used to go straight from the club to the game. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's don't kid ourselves. Hell yeah, did they fix something. This was awesome. I have used to love the All-Star game back in the day with Magic and Isaiah, and they never played it at this level that they did in the fourth quarter. This was – what people forget, man, we think play, that fans are all into stars. Fans are into great competition. Yes. Period. Right. That's what attracts fans. Great. Oh, man. And it, let's, say it, let's say they were acting. It's a great acting job. It fooled me oh, and it me. fooled a bunch of other people. <laughs> and so all it is is a TV show, and they pretended like they really cared. Yeah. And that's infectious. And people are like, oh, man, the stakes actually matter. They want to win this money for these charities. You can actually hear the kids in the charities cheering and all that, that energy in the building. That was amazing. I hope they improve on it even next year or if it just stays the same. But, yeah, I think the NBA All-Star Game is now once again an event that is kind of must-see TV yeah. for me. My bad. I didn't answer the question. N no, they haven't permanently fixed it. Thank you. That's, that's, my, my, that's my issue, saying they permanently fixed it. I think they can keep this for the next three, four years. I don't know that it will ever be as good as it was this year. You had wow. the whole Because you had the, the whole... You had Kobe's presence. Mm. You had mm. wanting to honor Kobe. You had mm. wanting to win the first Kobe MVP of the, of the All-Star game. And, and it's brand, it was brand new. I think that was what made this so okay, exciting. Hold, it was hold. so organic. You're going to roll a basketball. I'm not, with a the, the dynamic of winning each quarter had a lot to do with the competition of the game. I'm sorry. I, you you got to talk about that. If All players know that coaches that teach winning quarters in the NBA and NBA regular season yeah, games, yeah. they come out and play hard as hell the first quarter. Yep. Micro goals. The, the dynamic of yeah. winning every quarter yeah, made them smart. play from the beginning of the game. I think yep. that was the best part of it. You made it digestible. That's but, real. But, Stack, you think you can roll a basketball out with the best basketball players in the world in a fourth quarter and say, hey, get to this score first, and they're going to be like, I really don't care. Not I'm at all. They're they going to care. Yeah, they're going. They're going. They're going hard. Um, they're going hard. What is the greatest attribute of all athletes, the ability to compartmentalize? We have a switch, and we're cognizant of that switch. We can turn it on. We can all it takes is to get crossed over. Okay. Get a jump in your face. Okay. It's going. James it's Harden going. got nutmeg that didn't even trip. He's laughing. He's like, all right, thank you yeah. for Trey Young. Let me just show you how – and James Harden's ultra – uber competitive. <laughs> Doesn't matter. He knows he's going to go home and get right and get buckets yeah. next week. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Since Whitlock's my dog and he seems like he's championing this the most, you my man, yeah. I'm going to take you to the crib. All right? So Ooh. you're older than me, but my son right now uh, falls victim to this. He collects monster trucks. 
and they break down sometimes. And I got this little <laughs> case of <laughs> crazy glue, and I put them back together, and he thinks they're all good. And guess what? It's still broken, but they roll. This is still broken. It's rolling. It suckered you. It suckers my son. But it ain't fixed because those guys are doing acting jobs, just some are greater thespians than others. And you're going out there and saying, now, this is fixed because they did a better job of selling us. I'm sorry. It, it's too much fluff for me. Where's the acting? The acting, the fact that Giannis will go, you think Giannis is going to lose a game if he really was invested going just 0 for 2 in yeah. the fourth quarter? Well, well you got to think, okay, you know, that's what. You he think had, James Harden lets people he just... He had about 10 dunks in the first quarter. Come on, when the game's on the line. You think James Harden lets people just go between his legs and like, oh, that's so cute. That I mean, was early. That was early. Okay. That's that was my early. point. It's all they picked their spots. But the fourth but quarter the, was real. But does, these you, are the top you telling 24 me, players. Are you telling me... Do you think the, they picked their spots? But what I... What I uh, what I push back on is your suggestion that the fourth quarter was not legit. Mm -mm. This is just about us. We want to win mm -hmm. this damn game. We want to be the first one to 157. I don't think there was any acting in that. I think it was legit. I want to show you I'm better. LeBron and Giannis going back and forth at each other, that was about I want to show you I can stop you and I can score. Look, there's two hards. I can go hard for me or I go hard for y'all. And I know the difference. And, and look, in the Pro Bowls, <laughs> I go hard for y'all, and look, the money's on the line. I get, man, stop. Mm -hmm. This nothing you're going to sell me today is going to be greater than what I already have or what I can accomplish later. Well, that's the problem for me. James didn't let him throw the ball through his legs. <laughs> he didn't, but it happened. And and, and and Trey does this during regular season games. Yeah. I've that's seen true. people make James look worse during regular season mm -hmm. games, so yeah, it yeah. don't matter. They they it, I don't think they sold. I think like you said, it's not completely fixed. I think the end of the game was wrong. But I think they're, they're real close to having and kids, I, I'm going to you know? tell you the other thing that you're, you're underestimating, and, and I don't <clears> – <throat> I'm not this sort of sentimental. But, again, when you – these guys have been blessed beyond belief, mm -hmm. financially, athletically, and they spend that little weekend connecting with the kids from that charity, and they know it's important to the kids of that charity. And I'm just sorry, these guys are human beings. And it was important to those kids – and it became important for those guys. Hmm. They didn't want to let those kids down in that fourth quarter. <laughs> me, I really believe that. Let me prove that wrong. And this is going to sound heartless, but yeah. let's be real. Those little end zone kids, I got tired of them. Because guess what? They kept putting the camera there, and then there's a showrunner saying, yeah. Th even yeah. the kids know what's yeah. on the line. Guess what yeah. the kids are sitting there like, man, come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got to act. We're like, you know how the game hey, goes, hey, but, man. But, but, those but, kids but to are the player's people. credit, I was out there. <laughs> it, was probably, probably, it was probably the night before the game. It was probably like 10% of the players. A lot of those guys was in resting. A lot of the guys took the, took the game serious. Yeah, brought the Sunday. Party. Brought the party. Sunday's oh, game. Right. They probably went out Friday. But well, Sunday, Saturday night, they was, they was at home resting for that game. It's also the beauty of the new All-Star break. They got like four yeah. or five days now. Where well, they all of them leaving All-Star and going now. on vacation exactly. now. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. They can get the party Stop on there. Playing. Joined now by Fox NFL analyst LeVar Arrington and former Patriots offensive lineman Rich Ornberger. All right, let's move to Las Vegas which apparently is what Raiders fans are hoping Tom Brady will do. A couple of weeks ago, reports surfaced that the team would pursue Tom Brady in free agency. And now, according to Larry Fitzgerald Sr., the father of the wide receiver and a respected member of the media in Minneapolis, John Gruden and company are ready to offer Brady a deal worth $60 million over two years. If true, is this just a marketing ploy or does it sound football? I lean sound football. Um, Tom Brady, just the imagination of dressing him up with better weapons, um, a running game, whatever you want to think of their offense, and then some young talent on defense, what you will be able to do and what they were able to achieve this year with Derek Carr, despite Derek Carr having better numbers, not winning those necessary moments. So I say lean football. Then you think about the marketing, obviously. When you say Las Vegas Raiders, it's really almost sold that this is going to be attractive. 40 million plus tourists go through Las Vegas every single year. I was at a football game yesterday, XFL, LA Wildcats, more Raider fans there than not. And they're talking about the Las Vegas Raiders, not so much on the field, but just how it's going to be a spectacle to be in Las Vegas by locale and the brand of the Raiders. But then what I really land on is John Gruden, 10 years, $100 million. Who else has the cred, the equity? Who else has F you money to just say, I'm going to try this out for two years. And if not, I still have six years left of runway on a deal that says I am the one 
that can have the audacity to pull this in, whether it works or it doesn't. I agree with you. I think it's sound football, too. I mean, on its face, Tom Brady is a better quarterback than Derek Carr. So if you have an opportunity to upgrade... On, on whose face is this? On mine. Okay, on your And, li- and listen, I mean, on paper, everybody can look at it and show right. me the completion percentage of Derek Carr, and you can show me how many uh What about Brady's birth certificate? He now, piled that, up. That fact <laughs> in the is that on your face, the birth certificate? <laughs> I'll, ta- I'll take age. I'll take, I'll take 42 years of age because we know Gruden's track record. The only Super Bowl he won was with a veteran. Brad Johnson came to Tampa Bay, and they got it done. Mm. And so I look at, you know, a, a coach who is – Seemingly difficult to work with if you're a quarterback. Being impressed with the mental capacity of a player like Brady. And this is a shoot-your-shot situation. He's either going to finish his career with the Patriots, Tom Brady is, or if there is that much strife in-house in New England that he can't play another down for Bill Belichick, shoot your shot. Because you're going to get the arguably the world's best quarterback who's ever walked the planet – and you may get him for one or potentially two more years, and you got a good offensive line. You got a good, good young running back in Josh Jacobs. Shoot your shot. <sighs> I, I think it's a, a media stunt. However, I think it's sound football. And I think it's, it's by putting it out there that we're willing to pay an excess of $30 million, uh, per year to have his services uh, I don't know exactly what they would be using it for. It could be negotiation tactics against somebody internally with the team. It could be to feel out if this is really something that could possibly happen for them to be able to get Tom Brady. Um, But again, you're looking at a recency or or a win now effect. Even though he has that that long-term contract with the major numbers on it, I still think that Mayock and and Gruden are really pressing themselves to try to win games now. And if you're trying to win games now Mm. and you tried to do it with A.B. last year, I'm sure there may be a a connection there. Maybe you try to bring A.B. back into the fold. But if it is truly a a football sound move, it's because they're gauging and measuring what the possibilities are. I'm going to go with you, LeVar, and say that it's marketing. Mm Mm-hmm. But there could be a kernel of sound football in it in this regard. You may be forcing the Patriots' hands. You may be forcing them to pay more for Tom Brady than they want to, which could complicate things for New England. And if I were in the AFC, I would want things to be complicated and difficult for the New England Patriots. Do things that disrupt their game plan, their strategy. They've dominated that conference for so long. Do things that make them uncomfortable. But primarily, I think... Bringing Brady to the Ra- to the Raiders and Las Vegas, it would be marketing. I don't think you can ship him away. From- he has the most value for New England and Bill Belichick, in my view. You ship him to Las Vegas with John Gruden, a new offense, new system at his age. I just don't see it working that well, other than a lot of people will go see Fat Elvis in Las Vegas, and they'll go <laughs> see 42-year-old Tom <laughs> Brady in Las Vegas. And they'll also go out there and see a wedding, and potentially this is going to be the honeymoon phase still for John Gruden. You got to remember, he had a contract that we thought was absurd because it's going to allow you the latitude to do stuff sometimes deemed foolish, like this. this. If you don't believe in Tom Brady, he still could pull this off and laugh at you after the failures. And that's what it is. This is a guy who's shooting a shot because Tom Brady's always been in his fantasy as a quarterback. Mm. He finally gets to make that happen. And forget about the Patriots. I'm driving up the price for the L.A. Chargers. They're in my division, closer to home. I really want to do that. So I don't think this is absurd. I don't think this is marketing in priority. Las Vegas Raiders. I'm there. I'm not a Raider fan. I'm an anti-Raider fan. I have to see this spectacle. Not only the stadium, the amenities, but there's going to be real football in Las Vegas. I think it's sell. LeVar Arrington and Rich Ornberger are back with us. Time now for Darnell's question of the day. All right, take it away, homeboy. Yes, sir. Let's move to the XFL, where we saw week two action kick off this weekend. No doubt week one was a, had a huge success with a lot of buzz around the league's new rules and exciting style of play. But week two, we definitely saw some struggles by QBs, including New York, New York Guardians' Matt McGloin, who went off about his team's performance at halftime. Check this out. 
What does this team need to do on offense to get something going here? We need to change the whole entire game plan at halftime. Okay, what do you need to change about the game plan? What are you uh, frustrated you know, about? There's just a lot going on right out now. Uh, it's embarrassing for us here as an offense, so a lot of things we want to fix and correct. I want to ask you guys, how can the XFL improve its quarterback play? Well, I think, to me, I, and I watched some this weekend, I think they need to de-emphasize the quarterback. This should be a league about the running backs mm. and the running game. Mm. I'd love to see r rules that help the running game because I think the style of play of the XFL should look different than the style of play of the NFL. Mm. Them out there trying to mimic NFL offenses is going to be a disaster because they don't have NFL quarterbacks. But I do think you could build some teams around running games that – and a different style of play that would be exciting to watch. Um, I want to preface what I'm going to say. Interesting, what you said. Um, I'm not a fan of this level of criticism this early in the process. I think it's too much and it's too soon. Um, anybody who's been around football knows that, and Mike Florio should know that as well. That said, you got to have patience. It's only week two. Golly. First thing that triggers on a football team is defense. <laughs> like, we – we see color, hit color, y'all in trouble on offense. Oh, y'all trying to figure it out, call plays, huddle up. You're supposed to be here. <laughs> We're destroying you. And then what clicks last, even offensively, is the quarterback position because he has to know what everything, everything's going on, all 11 guys including himself. And then the other 11 guys across who are trying to go in disguise and coverage and fronts and stunts. All those things are happening. And in week two, we're going to come down on it. Now, it's interesting. I look at it. You need time to build the chemistry. You need time to go out there and let this all blossom. And everyone, and you said it too, Jason, I understand when we say these are not NFL quarterbacks. But guess what? These are also not NFL defensive linemen, not NFL linemen. The point is it's a relative experience. They don't have to be NFL good. They have to be XFL good. And in a relative experience, you can dominate, and these guys are going to mature into their positions. You go to a restaurant. I went to the Wynn Hotel. Grand opening, amazing hotel, beautiful, service suspect. You go to a new restaurant, amazing food, service suspect. It takes time to work those things out, and I think that's what's happening at the quarterback position. Yeah, there's a lot to iron out. There's no question. I was actually a broadcaster on the call in the Alliance of American Football last spring, and the same issues were really prevalent throughout the season, and they didn't make it through a whole season. The offensive line play was poor the quarterback play was poor. And that lasted the entire spring. It really didn't jump back up. And I think it's because, frankly, the quarterback position, it's at a dearth of talent at that level. Mm. You have a lot of the top talent out of the college football ranks being scooped up by these 32 NFL franchises, and they're taking three at a time. It's difficult to play quarterback. We know that. There's probably five elite quarterbacks walking the planet each year in the NFL, and then there's a bunch of guys who are in a tier below, and then there's a tier below that, and we're talking about starters in the NFL. Mm. So if you are going to have a better class of talent in the XFL at the most important position played, you need to pay these guys more. Mm. Colt McCoy earned over $3 million last season. He was a backup in Washington. Brian Hoyer made $5 million as a backup in Indy. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater's making a small fortune. Now he's the best of the lot. But if you want to have better quarterback play in the XFL, you need to pay these guys and actually take a run at taking some of the top-level backups in the NFL and having them be XFL starters. I take a different stance on it. I think these guys are NFL talents. And, and I think that when you look at what they bring to the table – they just have to be developed. So I think what looks like a curse is, is really a blessing in disguise because you're talking about having the opportunity to show here's what a quarterback looks like that's not an elite NFL quarterback. You put in, if you put in like, I remember that game, and we'll talk about this later in the show, but you put a guy like Mason Rudolph in the game and he looks like an XFL quarterback. Like, <laughs> he looked really bad. Yeah, he did. You put some of these backups in the game and they look really bad. So... All does this serve to me when I looked at it and I saw the question, I was like, we don't need to improve how the quarterbacks play. They need to prove that they can improve the quarterback. And then now you have a legitimacy of your league by saying, you know what, these are guys, maybe a numbers game, maybe it was talent, maybe it was just a lack of development, but we can make them better. I, I just think, to me, I, I watched the XFL and I was like, man, I, want, I need Oliver Lux 
email address because I want to send him some ideas. Again, <laughs> it, to me, I go to this NBA All-Star weekend. They took a bold stance and did something different, and it worked. And too many people are afraid to be different than everybody else. The XFL should be different. Again, I, the NFL used to be about the running back. They drove ratings. They drove interest in the game. That's what I would build my brand around in the XFL, the running backs and running game. And then the other thing, and this is why I want Oliver Luck, I wish that they would put, if you own uh, season tickets in the XFL, you should take your season ticket holders and let them vote at the end of the year on whether the coach gets fired or retained. Oh, wow. Oh. Empower the fans yeah. so you build hardcore passion. You know that kind of goes against what you conventionally think, though. You, you do know that, right? XFL, you got to do So if it's different. driven by Twitter, if you're going... It's a different league. No, it's a different by season you know, ticket holders. You might want to spray some of that off. Can we, also, <laughs> can we also give a little credit to Matt McGloin for kind of starting this, sparking this conversation? And I want to... Just remind him, like, look, I, I saw through what he was doing at the halftime, being mic'd up, a little sensational, because there's upside. There's another league on top of me. Let me make it seem like I'm not the reason. It's the play calling and it's everything. He's that a media me. dude, too. He's been, yeah, he's yeah. been on, he's been I in media, I caught a lot too. of that savvy come out, let's just be real. NFL got caught with their pants down when they mic'd up Sam Darnold, put him out there. He saw a ghost. <laughs> I, NFL I died, saw a ghost. And Sam Darnold died. This is why you don't mic up players all the time again, in all moments. I think to y'all's point about Mac McGloin, trust me, he's being actually smart. He wants a job up here yes, on the he TV does. show. Yes, he does. There you go. Talking about football yeah, based off it. All right, right, Darnell, right. did anyone win the XFL Super 6 contest this weekend? Yes, sir. We had a huge group of winners. And want to say congratulations to the 900 fans who all walked away with some Damn. cash. Before the games kick off next weekend, be sure to download the Fox Sports Super 6 app. Play for free for your chance to win. Joined again by LeVar Arrington and Rich Ornberger. Time now for the most fearless discussion of the day. All right, on Wednesday, the NFL lifted its ban on Cleveland Browns defensive end Miles Garrett, who was suspended indefinitely in the aftermath of an in-game melee between the Browns and the Steelers. Garrett snatched the helmet off of Pittsburgh quarterback Mason Rudolph and then clubbed him with it. On Friday, Garrett doubled down on his contention that Rudolph used a racial slur during the brawl, telling ESPN's Mina Kimes during a softball interview that Rudolph called him a stupid N-word. Garrett first made these allegations one week after the November 14th game. In his softball interview with Kimes, Garrett remarkably said his actions were indefensible and that he did not want to make this brawl about race. He did not want to make the brawl about race. There was one crime committed on November 14th. We all saw it. Garrett clubbed Rudolph with a helmet. Listening to Garrett rationalize his actions after he served his punishment is the equivalent of O.J. leaving the joint and saying Rod Goldman called him a racial slur. Miles Garrett is a clown of Jussie Smollett proportions. Rudolph called Garrett's claim 1,000% false and a bold-faced lie. Rudolph's agent labeled Garrett's claim defamatory and threatened legal action. Steelers coach Mike Tomlin issued a statement strongly backing his quarterback, saying, quote, I support Mason Rudolph not only because I know him, but also because I was on that field immediately following the altercation with Miles Garrett and subsequently after the game. I interacted with a lot of people in the Cleveland Browns organization, players and coaches. If Mason said what Miles claimed, it would have come out during the many alt interactions I had with those in the Browns organization. In my conversations, I had a lot of expressions of sorrow for what happened. So we're supposed to believe that hearing the N-word caused Garrett to lose control of his emotions on the field, but he also remained calm enough not to shout or talk about it on the field. You know what's far more likely than that scenario? A black player on the field calling Garrett a stupid N-word. We love the word, and we use it in a derogatory manner more, more than a term of endearment. We use it as a weapon of destruction, the same way Garrett is trying to kill Rudolph with it now. We heard Garrett the first time he rolled out this weak excuse. It's less credible the second time around. All right, Marcel, let's get us rolling here. Yes. Do, you, do you like Miles Garrett repeating his allegation against Mason Rudolph? I do. Um, I like him doubling down on this and tripling down if necessary because it's his truth. Um, none of us were there. Um, unfortunately, no audio can exonerate or even indict someone in this situation, which is a little peculiar, which I think lends itself to Miles Garrett's case more than Mason Rudolph's, uh, but I digress. Um, let's say this. My therapist always talks about 
How you are is not who you are. And I think that's very important to this situation. How you act in certain moments doesn't mean that's who you are all the time or properly defines you. Just like you can do something dumb and not be a dummy. Just did something dumb. So here's the thing that really strikes me when I look at this situation. I have reasonable doubt in terms of what Mason Rudolph and Coach Mike Tomlin are saying. And they're saying it so emphatically that I'm like, I have doubt. Rudolph's reasoning for trying to pull off Miles Garrett's helmet unsuccessfully, wrestling with him, punching him, kicking him in the manhood, was because he tackled me late. That's kind of petty. Okay, now let's fast forward to when it really went down. And I believe in a moment of excessive stupidity, which is really instigating a fight with Miles Garrett if you're Mason Rudolph, that's kind of stupid. And then chasing him without your helmet, which is just beyond stupid, it's absurd. That all of a sudden, in that range of stupidity and absurdity, I'm not to believe that you went to a stupid, absurd place and used the N-word. I have doubt that you didn't use that word. So just using the circumstances against him, using the moment of irrational behavior against him, he did all those dumb things, all these crazy things, but he didn't do this one? Remember, Mason, even if you did, how you are is not who you are, brother. Football players have a quick switch. And for all the arguments you made on behalf of Miles Garrett, they can be made against Miles Garrett. Yeah. The same way Mason Rudolph could have blurted something out offensively. And if he used hate speech, and I hope the evidence come out, he should be castigated. Because that's, that's not appropriate. There's no room in it for our game. We all know that. But... The same way you can defend Miles Garrett, you can use those same words. So in a moment, could I see him feeling, you know, attacked and, and defending himself or feeling like he needs to defend himself, swinging a helmet, and then afterwards realizing how egregious this all looked? And then in another moment, having a poor reaction and telling a small lie, a fib, one that he didn't think was going to go public to the NFLPA, because remember, this story got out because it leaked. He didn't want it to get out. To get out. Mm -hmm. But now your back's against the wall. Sometimes a small lie turns into a big lie. Now, am I calling Miles Garrett a liar? No. Because I, I am. I'll never Go know ahead. the truth. <laughs> I'll never know. We may never know the truth, good. so I can't call a man a liar. But I do know that feeling, and everybody knows that feeling. When you get caught in something, you have two paths Either you go the path of the truth mm. or you stick with the lie. Mm. And there may have been that crossroads in this situation, and that is a difficult crossroads to reach, and there is no backtracking now. I don't like it on different levels. First, first thing I thought of when, when I saw it, this happened in November. Super Bowl's over, season's over. You did your, you did your penalty. You were penalized. You were found to be culpable of what took place. You were suspended. Now, I'm looking at it from this perspective, and this is just where I come from, and this is how I interpret things. If you did, if, if it truly happened the way he's saying it, then even with that taking place, I see a Miles Garrett apologizing for what took place, taking the high road, and moving on, because you know what? You've already served your penalty. You're yeah. going to go into your offseason, move on from it as a, as a player and for your team because you were considered or still are considered a leader on your team. Move on. Secondly, I feel like this exposes more about Miles Garrett and how he's wired versus anything else. Whenever you got to repeat yourself, sometimes that's an indictment of guilt to me. That's my interpretation of it. I can recall many times where – I've, I've found myself doing things I shouldn't have done, and I always repeated myself to try to justify that my actions were justified. So I don't think that there, it was appropriate or even well-timed to come back and, and hash over it again, say it happened. Whatever happened, we do things on the football field. I hit him. I'm sorry for that because I shouldn't have done that, and I want to move on, move on with my career. Well, the timing was forced because the – suspension was over so it became newsworthy therefore they come out and want to do the interview then you're forced to either go down two paths 
give an excuse or give your reason. <laughs> and I like how you said it. Like, we've all been there before. Like, I could take the high road or I could yeah. try and get out of this in the low road and you just got to stay in the low road until you die. But you didn't get out of it. But, but, but here's the thing. His reasons, he's like, I'm not... Let's, let's rewind. And there is a third option, by the way. You oh. don't have to address it, but go ahead. Okay, true. All right, um, well, go ahead. After the game, Josina Anderson reported, after the game... Mm, now, you can take her credibility into question if you want, but I'm just telling you facts of matter. She reported that something was said. She there, predicted. Well, she predicted. I can't the go there either. I, I let you speak. I, I'm going to say what I heard. I'm going to see what I read. Point being, something was mentioned in that moment. Now, not to play it as a race card, he probably said, I'm going to keep this confidential until I get into a private setting, which he did. He never came out in an interview. But for you to say move on, I think it's convenient to be up here and say move on when so. Mason Rudolph is being called a racist and he's being called Jesse Smollett and more. So the, but the move reason, on the or you why, need your reason. But the reason why I'm going to say you move on from it, Marcellus, yeah. we don't have to be politically correct so much, right? You mean there are, much, there are much more heinous things that are said during the course of four quarters of a game. Much. Not so, in that context. What? Not, not, what, not what, con that, that context what, what, is different. That context is different. First of all, Miles all Garrett I never know, felt threatened. All, all let's I let's know. stop with that. Only one person in this conversation felt threatened. Who? Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph started something and then felt. Then like, how does that justify him hitting him upside the I head don't know with how, the helmet? I don't know how Miles Garrett felt threatened. He, he tackled, did. How does he? That's he my point. The he didn't. Listen, he didn't feel threatened. I think. So I, I hope we can all agree. There is one certifiable lie that's been told. It, I, I think mm. when this dude says, I don't want to make it about race, that's a lie. There's no way you can say he called me there, but I don't want to make it about race. That's a lie. And what that's the presented. only I, I the way that he presented it. I don't it, believe I it. I don't that. think he's lying. You know why? I don't think that Jesse Smollett should have ruined it for all black males in this predicament and saying that they're not speaking the truth. Like, okay, Jesse did his thing. But again, but you're why making it about... When you say the N... When he called me the N-word, that is making it about race. But that's the fact. Own it. To him. The, but, but again, oh. he's saying, I own it. I'm making this about race. Don't sit here and tell me, I don't want to make it about race, but he called me the N-word. No, you're making it about race. That's a lie. Why? I think you're touching, he said the N-word, and I smacked him. He's saying, the dude came at me first, and then in the, in the scrum somewhere, the N-word was said. I backed off. I had two dudes pulling me off. Then he came at me again, and I hit him with it. Uh, That's a different sta when, statement. When you flip it over to the other side and you think of Mason Rudolph, I mean, now this is somebody who's vehemently denying that all of this has taken place. He has his head coach, a black man, having his back. I mean, this is career napalm. If he actually uttered those words, and there's a microphone, which there are many on an NFL field, caught him saying that, a video camera, lip readers can figure this out pretty quickly if and there was a shot. And why haven't they? That's my point. So is it, it, it did it or did it not happen is the point that we've reached and Miles Garrett says 100% it happened. And so either we believe him or we don't. Either way, well, are you buying the NFL? Do you think that it'll ever come out? What if it was said or not? Do you think it'll ever come out? No, but that, Spygate then, tapes also didn't come out. Okay. Here's the thing. Why wouldn't the NFL either put the audio out, which would well pick us up? I'm going to tell you why. There's I think, no audio. I'm going to tell you why I think yeah. this whole thing is yeah. very childish. The, the, and that's, the whole, now you were about to go down the road. The and that's whole thing why is you, very, very childish. Huh. And for those of you with kids, you've seen, I've been a kid when I've got caught cold busted and then came with a lie to justify my behavior. Mm. This is what children do. When I watched this dude's interview with Mina Khan, he looked and sounded like a child. He didn't, it was, there was no conviction behind what he says. And then what a child will say is like, mommy, if you know what I'm saying, I don't want to make it about this or that. Well, you just did. You did. So either own up and be a man and you making it about race and you think this dude disrespected you in a racial way and that's why you did it. But don't come to me, oh, I'm saying this, but I really don't want to make it about race. This dude is a goofball who did something stupid, who's gotten in trouble in the NFL for playing rough with quarterbacks early in the year, <laughs> and he came up with some bogus excuse and trying to defame this but, man. But and again, even if 
true, First of which all, I don't believe. Any, Move on. Any objective person <laughs> can't bring all these circumstances together and say what happened in this moment. You, you can try and give me a character build, and it could be a character assassination against Mason Rudolph if you want to do that. That's a dangerous game. But two, if he comes off with conviction, that's going to convey that this is a guy who can't control his emotions. So him controlling his emotions all of a sudden now gets used against him because of what you already have in but your belief. But if it's never going to come out, right? You just said, in your opinion, That's you don't NFL. think it'll ever come out. I don't think the NFL's We'll never out. prove it. You so, already served your suspension. I, I would say that if Mason Rudolph was Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, I could get trying to protect him. The NFL has no motive to try to protect Mason Rudolph. Oh, really? This dude, by, by play, you don't want the, the You don't league. want the narrative of a racist league. Come on, man. There's a Mason reason. Mason Rudolph doesn't prove that there, there's there, a racist league. There is Look, one racist. way where both what? sides are, After Kaepernick? are, are telling the <laughs> truth. One, he said it, and Miles Garrett is telling the truth. Two, he didn't say it, Miles Garrett is lying. Or three, Miles Garrett thought he heard something. One, one of my other dude. Thought. Mm -hmm. Thought he heard Mason right, Rudolph right. say Jay -Z something. Jay-Z was playing on somebody's iPod. Who knows? <laughs> Let's move to the NFL where most people have Joe Burrow locked in as the number one pick, but not everyone seems to agree. Friend of the show, Bucky Brooks, just ranked Burrow as the second best quarterback behind Tua Tung Viola. Despite Tua's hip injury, the two guys are pretty closely matched with Tua throwing more touchdowns and a slightly higher completion percentage. And while both guys have national titles, Burrow took home the Heisman this year with a record-breaking season. Uh, any chance here? Buying that Tua is as good a prospect as Joe Burrow. I'm buying that he's a better prospect. Ooh. And I, I really feel almost slighted, like, to be one of the guys who has to be a campaign manager for Tua and his body of work. Like, what are we doing here? All right, let's start here. Um, in career passer efficiency in college football history, number one is Tua. Let's start here. The guy lost two games. And in those two games, one he threw for 400 yards and four touchdowns, and one he threw for 295 and two touchdowns. Wasn't necessarily on him. Let's go here. He played for three different offensive coordinators and became Tua by all three offensive coordinators. No potential, and I'm not trying to indict Joe Burrow, but no potential of being a one-hit wonder. No potential of you got to be married to Joe Brady or else. And we saw a body of work from Joe Burrow. He was, in the, he was at LSU before last year, y'all. Did y'all watch? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. My point is Tua throws the best ball, most accurate ball. Numbers support that. He's a winner. Tremendous personality, spirit, leadership abilities. I don't understand why this is a conversation. Everyone's caught up in the one hit, the one, one season. I'll take Tua. I love everything you said. I completely agree. I think he's a better prospect. You are now debating the elite coming out of college, and so I think this is a close second situation with Burrow behind Tunga Vailoa, but I love his pedigree. Nick Saban, he's a hard coach. You don't have guys uh, in the NFL sparing your feelings. You better be ready to get some real criticism, especially if you're the quarterback of a franchise. And so I think that bodes well moving on to the next level. Alabama guys, they're almost allergic to losing. So mm. I appreciate that pedigree as well. And, yeah, leadership. I, the, the fact that he was able to keep that locker room together through the transition during the national championship mm. game from Hurts to Tunga Vailoa, mm. it speaks not only to the maturity that Jalen Hurts exudes, but also – Tua, so, I, I mean, he's my favorite on this board, and that's not going to change. Yeah. If I'm basing it specifically off of prospect today, not what team they go to or anything based off of that, I'm saying Joe Burrow has to beat history in order to be the best prospect. All right? Think about this. As a Heisman Trophy winner, he just won it. Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson – Marcus Mariota, Jameis Winston, Johnny Manziel, Robert Griffin III, Cam Newton, Sam Bradford, Tim Tebow, Troy Smith, Tebow. Matt Liner, Jason White, Carson Palmer, Eric Crouch, Chris Wanky. I went all the way back to 2000. Tell me a Hall of Famer. Hmm. Well, tell, me a, tell me a perennial All-Pro on that hmm. list. Go. You want to look at it? Go ahead. We can look here at Kyler, possibly. We can look at Lamar Jackson, possibly. Now show me the rest. All right. Cam Newton had a level of success right. short lived. He is fighting against the historical devalue 
that these other guys that have won the Heisman before him. How about him, this one, though? Mm. Okay. How about, and that's, that's not a bad point, that's but how about this one? How about this one? One guy's got an injury history, the other one doesn't. Okay. He has less. Tua has less belief. Tua has less pressure on him coming into this situation. You know why? Because all of the spotlight is on Burrow. And now you'll see someone who, okay, depending but the on where he is, goes. Okay, find Tua as good a prospect as Burrow. I just, I just. And, and again, I get prospect, I'm, and you take into effect injury history, availability, injury history. Are you built for the NFL? I believe that Tua will have the better career because just based off of what I've seen, guys in Burrow's position, they do not pan out well gotcha. for a lot of reasons. A and, lot and look, of, the lot injury of concern doesn't wobble me enough to get off the Tua train. I'm right. staying on that damn train because the dude just shows too much. I, I don't need a guy to last until he's 40. If I'm a general manager, I'm looking at the next five years. I, I just, I'm looking <coughs> what at about the past a two or three window. years at Alabama. He hasn't been able to stay healthy. He's also fought through injury. Very important asset yeah. to know about a player before he gets in the league. I don't know how many games I played 100% but I'm going to guess zero. Uncle Jimmy's here to help us talk about our approval ratings for Giannis Antetokounmpo. You know. You know. I'm proud of myself. I finally mas mastered Antetokounmpo. All right, who's your big dummy of the day? <laughs> well, good you mastered something. <laughs> Listen here, man. Big dummy of the day to go to the person and say, I can get you a bucket. Of what? Don't do when it. Did I say Don't that? say that. Of what? Don't say it, When though. did I say I can get a bucket? You easy? I don't know what you said. Yeah. <laughs> the Colonel Spicy? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, he can get one. He can make one disappear, make <laughs> one reappear. I, I, I Let's easy. talk Giannis. <laughs> the team see, lost see, to the All-Star game last night. Too easy. Giannis scored Wait. zero points in the fourth quarter as LeBron's team came back to win it. Even so, the Greek Freaks Bucks have the NBA's best record. Marcellus, mm -hmm. are the Bucks a lock to make the NBA Finals? No, not at all. Boston is there. Uh, Philly at the high-level Philly when they're playing at their peak, especially at home, they're there. Uh, Miami with the wild card. Uh, I'm sure Toronto overachieving this year. No, nah, not a lock, brother. Yeah, I don't think they're a lock either, although I do kind of think they'll make it, but I don't know. The Greek Freak got exposed. Uncle Jimmy, you heard me. I said the Greek Freak got exposed in last night's All-Star game. Your thoughts? Long before there was an Uncle Jimmy, there was a Jimmy the Freak. <laughs> yeah. All you got to do is look up and down the streets of Kansas City, and you'll see how much work I put in to represent that name. Man, you know, that is hey, hey, look at boy, they call me the heartbreaker, the big girl taker. <laughs> yeah. You know, so right now I'm going to have to come to the defense of my fellow freaky brother. <laughs> Giannis Antetokounmpo, <laughs> the Greek freak, as they say. Forever. See, yeah. see, see, Giannis and I, we, we, we come from the same stock. Oh. You know, we, we follow the teachings of our fearless leader, the Honorable James Ambrose Johnson, Jr. Who? James Ambrose Johnson, Jr. Oh, I know who, who that is. Who? Rick James, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> the original super freak! Uh, oh, the boy. founder of the Church of Freakiology. <laughs> In the words of our leader, Rick James. Yeah. Hey, he said, Giannis is a very kinky brother. <laughs> What'd he say? He's, He's a freaky European brother. <laughs> Look here, in case y'all don't know, I'm trying to tell y'all. Giannis is a super freak. Oh. The boy is super freaky. <laughs> yeah. Look here, and I ain't got no doubt that he's going to follow the true teachings of the Honorable Rick James. Mm. You understand? He's going to follow him to grow this postseason. You understand me? You, you feel Look here, the boy can't lose with the stuff that we use. <laughs> See, he Man. got the power of the words of James Ambrose Johnson Jr. the leading. Rick James, got you. Rick James. Hey, ain't that where you got the name from, Darkness? <laughs> what? Ain't that where you got that name, Darkness, from? Dark you gave it to me. What you mean? What you talking Look about? Look here, man. Giannis, he busting out. <laughs> I'm tired of this. With, with, with some serious dunks. He going for MVP. <laughs> and he ain't concerned about you punks. <laughs> and y'all know he y'all know he thrives on the NBA theme song. What's that? I'm in love with Mary Jane. <laughs> It's my main thing. <laughs> It makes me play all right. <laughs> In other words, I'm trying to tell y'all, Mary Jane is a hell of a drug. 
Look at you asked yeah. me earlier. You, you, you said who gonna win in the finals with Giannis? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna tell you right now. He go, not only is he gonna make it to the finals, when he get there against the Lakers, he gonna walk straight up to LeBron at the half court line. Clippers. He gonna look at LeBron and say, LeBron! What did the five fingers say to the face? <laughs> Slap! <laughs> and then he gonna look at LeBron and say, unity! <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. In other words, Whitlock, yeah. forget your couch! <laughs> forget, we being real about this. Forget who? Your, your couch. couch. Oh, my couch. Oh. Your couch. Your couch, Whitlock. Your couch. Your couch. <laughs> Shoes and all on your couch. Shoes and your right. couch. <laughs> I've got Giannis as a 76. I actually moved him up from the last time we did him. Oh, nice. We did him last time after yes. he bombed in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, but all-star, not GOAT status. Oh, I had to I move him up as well. Job performance. He won the MVP, all-time greatest brain MVP. Brain. Even the character it he makes went up. Me feel Trolling right. James Harden, though. I love it. It makes love my it. heart. All right, so the internet agrees with both of us. They have him at 58% an all-star. No all right, that's it for us. We'll be back tomorrow. Me on with the love. No couch. Forget the couch! No.